Winning the Delano Pearl Award for the 2013 round of Carbondale is Luciano Sobarol driving for Hodges Walter Racing. That team's second pole in a row. Adrian Devereaux, his teammate, is alongside him on the front row. The major news item in the TM Master Cup Series is this maneuver that Packer Carroll pulled on Jose Luis Martinez during the round of California. Not only was Packer Carroll excluded from the race, he was uh, docked 30 points, and so therefore he has a the um, rather unenviable points total of negative 30. He also has a, a one race suspended ban that'll be effective until the end of the European Tour at the Round of Wales. So, um, for those of you not sure what the term suspended ban means, it's effectively a probation, but uh, unlike saying that he's on probation, uh, it basically tells you what'll happen if he violates uh, said probation. So, this race also was rained out on uh, Saturday. This race is being run on Monday, so uh, there's a lot of people not too sure what the track is going to be like, and not only that, but it's been very, very cold here in uh, southern Illinois. Anyways, Dan, off to you, and stay warm. Thank you, Lance. As you see, the Hodges Walter teammates sweeping the front row. Luciano Savarol gets a pretty good start in that uh, green number three car. Adrian Devereaux slips uh, back a little bit. Matthias Taub in that yellow 10 car. Uh, whoa, Devereaux is uh, pushing up the wall, and also the car in fourth, James Davis in one of the Independence cars, pushed up the track quite a bit. As you see, the field beginning to kind of string out a bit towards the front. Devereaux has a better run coming off the last corner, but Luciano Savarol will lead the first lap. Coming to take the green flag, Zelda Ashby, one of the FPO Terminator uh, FPO 9000s, came into the pits and at a puncture on the warm-up lap. Here is James Davis in qualified fourth. He won the TM Lights race. Uh, in Michigan last year. This is his first TM Master Cup Series start. He qualified pretty well, practiced pretty well, but that car looks way too tight right now. Here's Landon Roderick in car number four. Uh, the uh, number four Volpe having a pretty strong uh, start to this race. That car in front of him, that purple car, that's Kurt Pliskin. Pliskin usually runs fairly well here, so this should be uh, rather exciting to watch. Here's uh, Alessandro Rossini, car number 42. Looks like he thinks he has a problem with the car. Uh, he pulls it down low, but uh, then thinks better of it, and he uh, keeps it on track, doesn't come into the pit lane. I wonder if Rossini thought he might have had a tire go down after some uh, running over some debris. Ebenezer Quiggles Jr., a new paint job on the 99 car, but he is having a uh, an interesting start to the race. Uh, that car also looks way too tight. Uh, a lot of, of course, it's fairly cold today. A lot of teams... Uh, we're, uh, now normally you'd think that the conditions would make these cars a lot looser. James Davis and bouncing off of everything there is to hit out there. But uh, the teams really did tighten these cars up uh, quite substantially. And uh, some of them perhaps did it too much. James Davis in car 222. His first TM Master Cup Series start. He's a proven TM Lights winner. He's just having a rough start today. They need to get that car in quick. Here is Dan Lechleiter in the 47 car. As he gets into the back of Davenport, takes himself into the wall. Oh, Lechleiter. The... Uh, well, the New Yorker having some issues today, but uh, no caution came out there. He was at the back of the field anyway. He's one of the Independence Trophy cars. And here is Zelda Ashby. She has gone uh, quite a few laps down, but she's running lap times comparable to the leaders. So uh, really, uh, in case you're wondering why Taub hasn't really caught up to the 55, well, that's most likely why. Because uh, Ashby has been uh, uh, decently quick all weekend. Here's her teammate, Ebenezer Quiggles Jr., on the other hand, who has had a kind of a messy weekend. New paint job in that car, but yo, he got punted by Evgeny Kuznetsov in the uh, number 8 Katsuv. That wasn't very nice, but uh, still, no caution came out, and here come the leaders, and Lechleiter in the 47 car. Quiggles Jr. having a very, very rough first start here in the TM Master Cup Series in Carbondale. Uh, he has five Arlo wins to his credit, but... Uh, I think uh, he's just kind of wishing that this week was over already. Luciano Savarol has a, uh, well, fairly easy time getting by Quiggles. Quiggles uh, almost made uh, Savarol's life fairly difficult, but uh, I think that was mo mostly because of the closing rate. But now Savarol's got his teammate right behind him. James Davis in the 222 car. Uh, that team has kept him on track, hoping for a yellow. But, uh, oh, Davison's in the wall, and he spins it out. Brian Sendak involved. So, um, they're hoping that there was going to be a caution coming out. Unfortunately, uh, they were the caution. And poor Brian Sendak and the third guesser just got clipped there. Greg Woodard got into it. And so did Ben Atkins in the 50 car. Hard contact for the Tutino. The Englishman just not having a good start to this race. And we got more trouble up ahead. Up ahead of this mess. Uh, we're going to have a peek and see what uh, Yevgeny Kuznetsov saw coming through this. And looks like he may have gotten into the 50 car. Yes, he did. 
And uh, right now we have some radio conversation from the 41 car. Oh great, I just got wrecked again. How's that for a record two for two? Woodard, of course, uh, he's already taken the yellow. Not happy that he's been involved in two wrecks in two successive races. Some cars hit the pit lane. Uh, most of the field actually uh, pitted after this yellow to check on tire wear. Others decided to roll the dice. Frankly, I think I would have come in and checked uh, tires, especially given how cold it is today. Adrian Devereaux leads on the restart. There's the 41 car. Greg Woodard, he uh, went a couple laps down. Devereaux pushes up a little wide, and he almost wipes out in the wall there, but just scraped the wall a little bit. Looks like didn't even do that much damage to uh, car number one. As Leonid Roderick in the four car slides back into the clutches of Lewis Kingston. Here's Matthias Taub in the 10 car. A little contact with the uh, 24 car of Brandon Leroux. Oh! Leroux into the wall. Ashby around. Oh, uh, we're... Oh, they're wrecking everywhere. The cats have got together. Pliskin in the wall. Oh, boy. That's about five wrecks in one right there. Now, Taub and Leroux. I'm surprised that wasn't a bigger crash. Ashby looks like she just pushed up into the 16 car. She was running in the last third. Oh, no! Ashby's rolled it over, and that was zacked up. Nowhere to go there in the uh, 74 car just nowhere to go there melanie cleveno got into that in the in the uh, number 12 car and it, she's already committed to the high line and the 16 car is there packer carroll no fault of his own just uh he had to let the momentum play itself out and he uh, just tagged the back of the 12 car so uh packer carroll the volpe uh, the volpe drivers uh, had an okay weekend so far but uh well uh it kind of looks like a modified right now so maybe he should uh consider uh well, looking into those. Here is um, um, Michael Sykes, who's leading the race, coming to the green, but uh, there's so much debris on the track. He picked up a puncture while the rest of the field took the green flag, leaving Scott Bates in the 88 car as the leader of the race. Bates is the oldest driver in the field, and he's schooling all these young whippersnappers right now. And that is Arto Kekkonen directly behind him. Yamino Tenchi is the yellow car. One of the uh, Tenchi in this race with the promoter's option. Uh, Scott Bates in the black and gold 88 car is going to uh, lead under green here as Arto Kekkonen sits back in second. Here's Peter Short in car number 22, the four-time world champion, as uh, I think that's one of the t uh, Terra National most. Oh, Short pushed up into Dwyer! Kevin Dwyer, and they're both in the wall. That's uh, caution three. Oh, oh, we got more problems there. That's Anthony Griffith. Uh, Brian Sendak got into that as well. Peter Short's day is done, so the uh, former world champion out already. So... Very, very messy start to this race. As Scott Bates continues to lead the way in the uh, 88 cars, Roderick hits the wall. So Roderick looks like he went to dodge some of the back markers and uh, put himself in the wall. Now we're looking back at Nick Dawson in the 58 car, making his second career Master Cup Series start in the uh, one of the Terran International Motorsports cars. He tags the wall. He's in to Chris Johans. And that's Yulia Nasova around in the uh, number seven Katsuv. And Nasova's had kind of a messy day. She's already gotten turned around by her teammate. Now she's uh, in this uh, little kerfuffle. Anyway, uh, some of everyone else that was towards the front pitted, leaving Luciano Savarol as the race leader. In fact, it looks like the whole field came into this. Oh, the 18's in the walls. Troy Adams having a bit of contact there. 41-year-old Adams in second, and uh, he's, uh, well, just kind of hanging on there. Luciano Savarol, car number three, leading the race, but he's got to deal with all these back markers who are racing each other for position, I'd like to point out. And one of them, you notice, is the 10 car. So Taub has uh, got to get... Oh, Savarol into the wall. Just, uh, well, doesn't look like there's a whole lot of grip on the outside of turn one, and, uh, there, well, there never is anyway. 41-year-old Australian Troy Adams is running in second, but he is slowly falling into the clutches of the rest of the field. He's last year's TM Lights champion, so... Uh, Adams knows how to uh, drive a race car fairly well, in fact, very well, I should point out, but uh, the Nomotos just don't exactly seem to be, the, and uh, warning going out to Anthony Griffith in the 07 car, but uh, anyways, Troy Adams' Nomoto just doesn't quite look like it's got the speed today, and uh, we're getting reports also that the 14 car, the third Volpe, driven by Rachel Rainsford, sister of Alexis Rainsford, is dropping fluid on the racetrack. Uh, they said it was a white car at the back of the field, and that could be either Rachel Rainsford or Ryan Matthews. Hmm, they're pretty sure it's the 14 car. Arto Kekkonen, car number nine, is beginning to march forward in the uh, Gessler. That black or the silver and blue Gessler, that black car in front of him is Greg Woodard. That uh, blue and black car directly behind him, Adrian Devereaux. 
and uh, Kekin and Endeavoreau, well, they, that's a rivalry there that uh, need, those two guys don't exactly get along that well in the racetrack. Here's a surprise in the top 10, Alessandro Rossini in the Tutino. These guys have rolled the dice. I believe uh, they're running on a uh, tire significantly old in the rest of the field. So Rossini throwing the dice, seeing what happens, and uh, that seems... Oh, he scrapes the wall in the out, uh, coming through the dogleg, and uh, Rossini just kind of hanging on there, but he's giving Tutino a marvelous run. So uh, the Italian clearly showing his worth in this series. Chris Johans in the number 29 car, running in ninth. He's a two-time former Arla champion, almost won the Master Cup title just a couple of years ago. And he is clearly showing his stuff in the Manicor car. This, these cars uh, don't exactly have the same amount of uh, funding as the front runners do. And uh, those, both those guys giving him a great run great runs today. Arto Kekkonen in the meantime is beginning to put some pressure on Luciano Savaral. Savaral gives him room. Arto just kind of yes, is going gonna, is gonna to try to slingshot by. Not quite. He doesn't really have Luciano Savaral cleared, but Adrian Devereaux is just sort of lurking back there. Luciano gets slowed up a bit coming off the final corner. This uh, tricky triangular track. Uh, coming off the third corner, I should say. As Devereaux begins to turn up the pressure on his teammate, Luciano Savaral Giving Devereaux a bit of room on the inside as Devereaux slings by. That's Daniel Lechleiter in the 47 car hitting the wall. Lechleiter in the wall again. So, uh, looks like the Hodges Walter guys are playing it very, very easy here on Lechleiter, who, um, well, he looks like he's several laps down for a reason. This car not handling too well. He's in the wall again. Oh, he just goes and hits Yamino Tenchi. The 25 car is around. Five cautions and 45 laps. That's less than a third of the race distance. Oh, boy. Tenchi, one of the crowd favorites, just had really nowhere, nothing to do about that at all. She really had nowhere to go. Lechleiter just pulled it off the wall, and when it tried to pull that car off the wall, and uh, when he did, the uh, just hooked hard left, it looked like. And looks like Arto Kekkonen restarting as the leader, and your eyes are not deceiving you. That's Alessandro Rossini in second, and James Davison in third on debut. He's had a brilliant weekend so far. As Anthony Griffith. Uh, he's trying to paint the wall black in contact between Griffith and the race leader. So Griffith, he's the last car in the lead lap on that restart. Clearly didn't uh, look like Arto Kekin may have expected Griffith to uh, really back out of the throttle a bit and let him go. But Griffith just kept it in the gas, it looks like, and just made and almost took uh, the race leader out. Brandon LaRoe in the 24 car. It was the Decatur pole sitter last year. And uh, he's also running in the TM Light Series again with this same team. And he won the pole for the first TM Lights race. So he's gotten his uh, 2013 off to a pretty good start as he's working under Chris Johans. He is still in the lead lap in this 24 car. Alessandro Rossini in the 42 car is beginning to slide back just a little bit. I've never seen a Tutino run this high before, and he is really driving the wheels off this car, a car that he actually had quite a bit of influence in designing. So Rossini's talents, not only behind the wheel, but, uh, um, well, designing, are apparently uh, paying off. Uh, so that's a big shock for us here. Is Anthony Griffith in the 07 car is uh, still not playing nice with some people. And oh, Scott Bates gets into him. Scott Bates just hooked the 07 car and Griffith rolls it. Uh, it's Rachel Rainsford and Adrian Devereaux, Brian Sendak, and Chris Davenport, the $75 seat award for the day, almost piled into that. Now here's Griffith, and Griffith and Scott Bates have kind of been going at it for the past couple of laps. And Bates just had enough of that and put Griffith in the wall. Uh, Rachel Rainsford roll, uh, gets into the 07. Brian Sendak in that mix in the 94. Adrian Devereaux's radio chatter, we can't play for you because there were too many expletives. Um, but, uh, well, anyways, we're on board with the one car. And the, the 07 and the 88 are, have not exactly been playing nice on the racetrack. And uh, there's Rachel nowhere to go. But uh, I didn't see anything about uh, the officials calling the 88 car to the hauler or uh, to the uh, steward's office, rather. It's not really a hauler anymore. Uh, anyways, Mike, anyways, Michael Sykes in car number five leads the, leads the field to the restart. Uh, and I think a lot of people may be happy that the 07 car isn't in the field because uh, we, haven't, we didn't really show too much of it, but he really was um, all over the place today. As, uh, oh, a lot of people scraping the wall. That's D'Souza, the black and teal car. Arto Kekkonen sits there in second. And here is Lewis Kingston in the uh, 17 car, running back in the field a little bit. He's got a pretty quick car today. He's all oh, contact between Kingston and Quiggles Jr. Ebenezer Quiggles Jr. just way too ambitious there. 
in the 99 car brings out a caution there and that was just permission to speak freely sir I'm not sure you know what you're doing I'm not sure either because uh, that was way too ambitious of a move as Arto Kekkonen leads the field on the restart and uh, some of those cars that were on the uh, tail end of the lead lap got their laps back Matthias Taub, Gaspar D'Souza among them as that is Adrian Devereaux in a car with no front end on it running in second place Adrian Devereaux in the CRL modified uh, clearly uh, Adrian Devereaux trying to out some more different kinds of race cars to run in his uh, uh, <laughs> in the Master Cup series apparently Gaspar de Souza, the Portuguese driver, was one of the heroes at Fontana, and he's doing likewise here because he was way down the order uh, earlier in the race, but he's now running in fourth as he almost scrapes the wall there with that Tremwell. But uh, Black Diamond Racing doesn't have the biggest sponsor bill in the field, but de Souza is certainly proving his worth. Matthias Taub in car number 10 also running well in uh, the uh, Gessler there. He's taken fourth from de Souza since that last shot, and here's the, the modified of Adrian Devereaux still hanging on in the top five. Um, if he wins the race with this car, I think uh, the rest of the field may have to hi uh, hang their head in shame because that's a car with no front end on it is not really a car we expect to be seeing up at the front of the field. I guess that proves that aerodynamics aren't everything. Uh, as you see back here, Luciano Savarol in the, in the number three car is beginning to uh, challenge Matthias Taub of Sweden for that uh, position there, as you have Jenny Kuznetsov and Yulina Sova running nose to tail. Cars 8 and nine, uh, eight and 7, sorry. Uh, Kuznetsov running in 18th, Nasova in 19th. You have Jenny Kuznetsov, one of the most likable uh, rookies we've seen in quite some time. Very friendly guy. And uh, if you have a chance to go to a, a TM Master Cup Series race sometime, uh, please check out the uh, the Katsiv uh, kit there, some of their merchandise, especially Kuznetsov. We got a smoker on track, and it's Rossini! Oh no, he was going to get Tutino, probably their best result ever, but the Tutino has expired and we've got uh, Caution 8, lap 80. He's trying to pull that car off course, but there's just no space for him to pull it off and the car just stops on track. Very unfortunate and Adrian Devereaux is leading the race in the modified, oh boy. As Arto Kekkonen running in second is going to have to deal with... Um, well, getting around Adrian Devereaux, and I don't think Devereaux is going to make Arto Kekkonen's life very easy. Uh, I think there was a little bit of contact there. Hint, hint, move out of the way, please. I think so. Devereaux trying trying to fight that off uh, the last corner, but uh, to no avail. There's That car has got a lot of damage on it. As Leonid Roderick and the Volpe is way back in the field, but uh, he stayed on the lead lap throughout the entire race, and don't rule him out just yet. James Davison is back in sixth place, and after he pitted the first time at that first caution, uh, this car has been relatively clean. So kudos to Davison's crew for getting that car adjusted the way he wants, and he's having a great run today. Adrian Devereaux still running down, Art, trying to run down Arto Kekkonen, rather. He just matched him that, uh, that time by as far as uh, lap speed goes. Kekkonen not really pulling away from him, but Devereaux seems to be rather sluggish on these restarts. Michael Sykes in the five car running back and forth after his uh, rather long day. Davina Henton has clawed her way up to ninth place in the underpowered, underfunded, uh, well, not exactly underfunded, but, uh, well, they're not exactly the most power of the Lynx racing team. Uh, well, they don't have, that's the old Majestic Motorsports team, and, uh, well, points for Majestic Motorsports were not something that happened very often. Let's just leave it at that as we're looking off the back of Adrian Devereaux's car at Matthias Taub in that yellow 10 car. Uh, one of the better liveries in the field, uh, Matthias Taub, uh, running, uh, some people would say, for his job because uh, Gessler apparently wants to see uh, a stronger Matthias Taub than they did last year, and uh, clearly they're getting their money's worth because Taub has been uh, absolutely on it all day and at California. Brandon LaRoe in 13th place is going to go a lap down. So, uh, the 24 car, even though he's solidly in the points, he's now off the lead lap, oh, and into the wall a little bit, just scraping the wall. Uh, we would be calling that a Darlington stripe, except we're not at Darlington. As, and now he's going to give room for Matthias Taub in the 10. We got a smoker on track, and that's Davison. No, Davison's out from 12. A fantastic 12th place run goes up in smoke for Davison. And he was having such a strong run in that Omeka. The inner drain team has got to be gutted. They had a very, very strong run going. Look out for him in the future. James Davison, that's a name to remember. Arto Kekkonen leads the field right now, still leading the field. 
I believe it's not going to be long before he uh, sews up the bonus points for leading the most laps, but Adrian Devereaux is actually closing in on him now in car number one. Uh, that has... Oh, my. There's going to be so many jokes that are going to be made about that that I should probably just stop myself right there as uh, Brandon LaRoe battling Lewis Kinks. Oh, contact, and around goes the 24. I was going to say they weren't really battling for position. He was racing Chris Davenport, who was on the inside. As we got 11 cars still on the lead lap, and Chris Johans in the Manicor is sitting in second place. Great run for Johans. Haven't really said a whole lot about him all day. And, well, he just goes and hits the wall. Commentator's Curse. If you haven't heard of it, that's what it is. Um, here is Ike Durbin in um, car number 98, one of the Terra International Motorsports cars. He's in one of the Independence Trophy cars as well. He's having a strong run today. As Johans and Henton trying to navigate their way through traffic. And Taub, uh, oh, Johans in the wall. Trying to hang on to it. He saves it, and so does Lewis Kingston, who had nowhere to go but into him. Kingston in the 17 car having a good run as well. But Chris Johans in that 29 car. Great display of car control. As Leonard Roderick begins to put some pressure on Arto Kekin for the race lead. As Roderick makes a peek on the inside. And uh, Roderick goes by and takes over the lead. Roderick did pit onto that last yellow, we believe. So, and he took four tires on as a result. And clearly newer tires appear to be paying off. Adrian Devereaux now working around Arto Kekkonen. He also came in for fresh rubber that last time by. And that nine car really dropping through the field right now. And um, so uh, that Gessler just looks like his, he just burned his tires off. As here's Troy Adams going around. He was in 12th in uh, the 18 car that Emoto still in the lead lap right now. As here we see uh, Matthias Taub running in second place. Car number 10. The, uh, the Gessler team may not be... Uh, without a shot at winning this after all, but Kekkonen dropping back very quickly as we're looking now at Davina Henton in the 11 car who's running in fifth place. Lewis Kingston, Luciano Salvaro right behind her. Henton holding on for dear life, basically. She really wants to do well uh, here for the Lynx Racing Team. They didn't have exactly the best start to their season, and their offseason had so many mechanical failures that people were wondering if they'd make the uh, new 110% rule that they have in qualifying as Luciano Salvaro goes on the inside of Henton, uh, coming through the dog leg, a turn two, whatever, whatever you want to call it, and Luciano clears Henton, and look at how quickly he pulls away as Henton is now falling into the grasp of Lewis Kingston as Troy Adams in the 18 is, at, well, still having a good points run, but he's off the lead lap. Ian Cooper is running back in 14th place. That's Yulina Sova behind him, and Nasova turns him into the wall! Oh, I got some advice for you, Yulia. Run! Ian Cooper is not exactly uh, the guy you want to have um, angry at you. We may get 11 cautions in this race. Leonid Roderick gets a great jump on the rest of the field. We don't have that many laps to go in this 150-lap race. Scott Bates looking back at the 88 car. There's a lot of Scott Bates fans out there. where He's running in fourth. That's Luciano Savarol all over him, challenging him for that fourth position. He wants it. Bates has it. Bates doesn't want to give it up. As Savarol takes a peek on the inside in one, but he's, Bates can hold the outside. Oh, uses every bit of the racetrack, just keeps it off the wall. Savarol does have the preferred line, but that three car does seem to be pushing a bit, but he gets the spot anyways, as Roderick leads the field still. Scott Bates still hanging on there. Arto Kekkonen in that nine car did come in on that last caution to put new tires on that car, but he's dropped way back to 11th. But now, Savarol looking at Adrian Devereaux, who is still in third. And uh, Devereaux is going to yield the spot just because Luciano Savarol had a really good run on him. Coming in the last corner, Devereaux trying to fight back. But he might but he might pay for that later because Scott Bates is right on him with just two laps to go. Scott Bates in car 88 looking on the inside of Adrian Devereaux in car one. This is going to be really closely fought between these two men. Both of them want this spot really badly. Devereaux off the final corner, <clears throat> but Scott Bates is going to be able to take it into turn one with just one lap to go. Meanwhile, back up front, Leonard Roderick has pulled out a little bit on Matthias Taub, just enough to capture his first win of the season and his first for Volpe. Roderick takes home his 57th career win. Taub and Savarol completed the podium. Scott Bates, a fantastic drive to fourth. Adrian Devereaux finished in fifth with that car with no front end about it. And he was joking after the race that uh, he really wanted this uh, to win this one more than usual just because then he could make fun of everybody else, specifically because he didn't have a front end on that car.
There have been some wins in this series that have come under strange circumstances, but I don't think anything like that has ever happened. Davina Henton in six is a great drive from her. Michael Sykes, good recovery drive. He had a couple problems all throughout the day. Gaspar D'Souza in the double zero car brought himself up to a respectable eighth. I think we may see him in victory lane at the rate he's going. Ike Durbin, two top tens and two starts. Not bad, especially when you're running for the Independence Trophy and Chris Johans in the Manicor car shows his worth. Arto Kekkonen, you have to feel for him. But, at the end of the day, he did pick up the bonus point, leading the most laps. Yamino Tenchi and Lewis Kingston both had great recoveries. Uh, the Cats of Duo, uh, well, that's going to be an interesting conversation in the team hauler because uh, Kuznetsov ran over Nasova earlier in the race. Scott Stoidler didn't talk about him much all day, but he had a solid drive. Brandon LaRoe in the afterburner car, of course, he uh, ran very strong, as is becoming the norm for him, seemingly, in that uh, car. Ian Cooper, uh, he went to the steward's office to protest the contact between himself and Nasova, so he may see something come of that. Wouldn't be too surprised. Ryan Matthews there in 19th place, and a pretty good run in the Aspira, given all the uh, uh, shenanigans that were happening all around the racetrack. And Troy Adams, who was a victim of some of those shenanigans, uh, still brought home a point for Nemoto. And here's how the Drivers' Championship looks after just two races, with Devereux on top, 105 points, Scott Bates on 75, Kekkonen and Sykes tied on 73, Roderick and Taub tied on 60. Ike Durbin in the top 10 of the points after two races, that's a pretty good showing from him. But he's going to free fall through this, uh, the standings just on the virtue that he's not running the whole season and ne neither is Terra International Motorsports. I don't even think that team would have the funding to do that anyways. But even still, that's a great showing from those guys and they should be uh, celebrating down there uh, in the Terra International Motorsports pit just for how well they're doing so far. Uh, Gaspar D'Souza has jumped up into the top 10 in points. I don't believe he's ever been in the top 10 in points. The Portuguese driver, uh, one of the surprises so far this season. And I might have to say likewise for Chris Davenport. Uh, mostly because he hasn't crashed out of a race yet because he's crashed in every practice session. Uh, he hasn't crashed out of a race yet. So uh, I guess if you're going to hit the wall, you might as well do it when it doesn't matter. Ebenezer Quiggles Jr. in the uh, 99 car had a... Pretty messy race today. He's still in the top 20 in the championship, but uh, we look for more from both Davenport and Quiggles Jr. Uh, speaking of uh, those two, they're fighting for Rookie of the Year. Melanie Cleveno won it, only running half the races last year, and uh, Ike Durbin could be a spoiler in that Rookie of the Year battle, so I have to keep a little bit of an eye on that. Peter Short, the four-time world champion, in the top 20 in the championship, along with two cars, Kazuyama and Tenchi, who only got into the races with promoters options. A quick look at the Independence Trophy shows no surprises. Ike Durbin way out in front along with Ryan Matthews, the only two drivers to have run the first two races. There's 27 Independence Trophy cars, 10 have run so far, and we'll get to see more of them run at the next race of the season, the round of Georgia at Road Atlanta.